सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर कह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिषा ओ शाति 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 गुरस्त्र अखंडमंडलाकार व्या ये नाचराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये नस्म श्रीगुर नम अज्ञानतिरांधस ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुर्मील ये न तस्म श्रीगुर नम गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुर नम स्थावर जंगम व्या यचराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये न तस्म श्रीगुर नम चिन्मय व्यालोक्यम सचराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये नस्म श्रीगुर नम तमेव माता च पिता बंधु सखा विद्याद्रविड़े गुरुदेवदेव वे आर डूइंग दि सेकेंड चैप्टर ऑफ पंचदशी finish shloka 63 so vidyaranya analyzing the creation and brahman being infinite infinite cannot create anything because creation involves a modification and infinite cannot undergo modification but yet there is a creation and creation cannot be separate from brahman because brahman being infinite nothing can be separate from brahman because then brahman ceases to be brahman because being infinite there cannot be anything other than brahman at the same time there cannot be creation in brahman but there is a creation seems to be because i am seeing different things i am seeing the world from the jiva's point there seem to be a creation so therefore when scripture says because you are seeing a creation it comes to your rescue and says there was what was there before creation is one without a second that is in the form of a ex pure existence sadeva somya idamagramasi that existence alone was there before and it became many so tadaichada bhavsyam prada eti it wanted to become become it itself became many so creation itself is that brahman itself in different forms even though brahman cannot become any forms so it is an apparently different forms and when one is becoming into many there has to be force in order to do it that's what physics says if one is change of state requires a driving force and therefore there has to be force for one to become many and that force is called maya shakti so maya shakti is not complete of brahman it's only part of brahman and for that vidyaranya provides a scriptural support says this 
is padosya vishwa bhutani tripadasya amrutam divi so this is only a part of the creation not complete so it is part the whole, part of brahman only but brahman cannot be parted so it is an apparent part of brahman so this is all creation is being accounted from the point of jiva who is seeing creation but from the point of brahman there is no really creation so this level of understanding has to be understood because this is a teaching to the student and therefore to the student who is seeing different things says how does this happen therefore scripture comes to our rescue and says beta this is creation lord created like this so what how did lord created he created using maya shakti that is the power and this maya shakti from the maya shakti how did the creation starts the creation started when first thing is akasha was created so akasha says tasmat va etasmat atman akasha sambhutaha from brahman akasha came so what is akasha space so first space is the one that is created that's what we analyze in that so what does space has a uh, space has a property which doesn't have the parent parent is pure brahman that is sat and space has a property and we said it has a property of shabdam so shabdam is sound so sound is transmitted through the space so i can locate our spatial location by closing my eyes and doing anything but coming from which which side the sound is coming from i can locate an object therefore spatially i can locate an object based on the sound that travels in the space so space has a property of shabda so shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha see these five properties one by one evaluates and that comes from the second one of shabda from akasha vayu 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 means the air air has a property of not only akasha that is shabdam but sparsha contact so that's how each one we have analyzed in the beginning itself so from brahman we come to maya from maya we come to space so in the space it is having a property of sat because sat is what is brahman sat chit ananda swarupam sat means pure existence so when it comes to akasha akasha is is means akasha exists space exists so isness of space isness of the space is coming from the sat swarupam and it is picking up additional property that doesn't sat doesn't have and the additional property is shabdam or originally said avakasham akasha is that which provides avakasha avakasha means accommodates so that's how we define the the shakti maya shakti and comes to space space has one property different that sat doesn't have so ya shakti kalpaye dhyoma sa sad yomno rabhinnatam apajya dharma dharmitvam yadaye navakalpayet so we have when it comes to space we have two things one space itself that has a property of shabdam and also it has the borrowed existence so space itself cannot exist independent of the sat sat can exist independently but space cannot exist independently it is getting a support from that sat just as the ring cannot exist independent of gold from gold the ring came so ring the essence that called when it became the gold became ring that means it is called a material cause the very substratum the intelligent calls the goldsmith doesn't become gold ring goldsmith is only an intelligent cause whereas the gold is a material cause so gold became many gold became many ornaments therefore same way sat the brahman became many that means sat is the material cause for everything means it is the real material and we think the space is a we don't even think space is a material but all materials are in space avakasha so does the space is really real or not real this is a question that is going to be posed and 
that we will address here from the sloka 64. Throat is itching a little bit. Okay, let's chant to say sloka. Sato yo matwapa twama pannam. Sato yo matwama pannam. Yo nasatam to loki kaha. Yo nasatam to loki kaha. Tarki kas chava gachanti. Tarki kas chava gachanti. Mayaya uchitam hitatu. Mayaya uchitam together. Together. Sato yo matwama pannam. Yo nasatam to loki kaha. Tarki kas chava gachanti. Mayaya uchitam hitatu. So, Sataha, the Sat, that means the Sat Swarupam. So, Vyomatvam, Vyomatvam means the spaceness, Apannam is superimposed. So, what is space? So, what is spaceness? So, this is uh, the Indian logic system. It says, what is a chair? You remember we asked that question. What is a chair? How do you define a chair? Chair has you say a chair has, you have to define it in terms of its property. It has four legs, it has a back support, it's where you can sit. All those things become an attributes of a chair to define a chair from which is different from a table. Right? So the attributes of the chair should be different, distinctly different from the attributes of a table for me to for me to differentiate a, t a chair from a table. The same way every object in the universe should have attributes to differentiate that object from the rest of the objects in the universe and that is the our understanding right now how do i define a space space is an object because i know space so it is an object of knowledge so how do i know subject can i perceive a space the question do I perceive space? I really don't perceive a space. What I perceive is objects in the space. That's why avakasha, it accommodates object. So from science point, space is a gap between two simultaneous observ observable points. So I should observe two points simultaneously and the distance between the two points define the space. If I have only one point, then I cannot define space. I, if I have one, only one event, I cannot define a time. I need two sequential events to define a time. I need simultaneous events to define space. And space and time requires two. And therefore, if there is only space without any objects in the whole universe, then I cannot recognize space. Not that space is not there. I cannot recognize space because my mind requires a, some reference state. You follow now where the problem is? Problem is not in the space. Problem is a, an observer need a, a reference point in order to define a space. Now, from the point of space itself, is there or is there not? Is there space exists by itself? How do we prove? Objects cannot exist without space because it has uh, space accommodates all the objects. So if there is an object, it has to be in space only. Space is infinite because if there is finite, they will say what is there on the other side of space. So if there is some space, then it is also totally infinite. So space has to be infinite and objects have to be accommodated in the space only. But space itself, does it exist but independently according to our scriptures? There was a time where there is no space because Sadeva Somya Idamagramasi existence alone was there before creation and from there Atma Akasha Sambutaha from that Akasha came that means before that Akasha was not there. Right? So therefore there is a place or time I shouldn't say even time because time itself is a concept of uh, creation therefore there was when there is no space but Existence alone was there according to scriptures. Now, how do we prove this? There is no way to prove other than in the deep sleep state. When I go to deep sleep state, I am there. That means I as an existent entity is there, but there is no time and space. Because when I am in the deep sleep state, concept of time, concept of space do not come at all. 
I don't know where I am. I don't know what is time and all that. So I am there. The existence can be there where space cannot be. Space came into picture only when um, my mind is also conscious of it. In the waking state or a dream state, there is a space where the mind is. Therefore, there can be play, there can be the existence without having a space, but there cannot be the space without existence. When I say space exists, that means existence has to be supportive for the space also. So this aspect is being stated here. It says Sat Yomatvam. Yomatvam means spaceness. Spaceness is a noun of that which has a space property. If, if I say space property, just as what is a chair, that's what we were defining like, chair has, we said all the attributes, but none of the attributes can differentiate exactly this is a chair. That which has four legs is a chair. Four legs, many have four legs also, some people, <laughs> at least animals have four legs. So we cannot say it is exclusive property of chair to define a chair as a chair and not something else. Even table has four legs. So, four legs cannot be used as a definition for chair. So, what, whatever you speak by itself cannot be swarupa dharmam, cannot be, and swabhavika dharmam cannot be defined. So, what is that which makes that chair as a chair and not a table? So, our tarkika, sargika means our grammar, the logicians uh, define a chairness is that which makes chair a chair. So chair is that which has chairness. And therefore, for any noun, they have to add a ness to define that object. Otherwise, we cannot define an object because we do not have the real material of that. What is the real material? Real material, according to scripture, is only existence alone was there that itself became many. So real material is existence and existence is imperceptible because it's infinite. So if you look at all this analysis, all logical, at the same time mind-boggling also, because it's packed logically, at the same time we, we don't know what existence is. So here we are trying to define what is space. It says that sat yomatvam, yomatvam means the spaceness is superimposed on existence. How is that? Ringness is superimposed on gold, for you say it is ring. When you say gold ring, the ring is a, how is this ring? How do you define a ring? So what is, how do you define a ring is only ID, OD, all those things you will ID means internal diameter, outside diameter, ellipticity, all those attributes that differentiate a ring from a bangle, you can give me to differentiate this is ring and that is, that is uh, the uh, bangle. But what kind of ring this is? Oh, this is a golden ring, right, that's what we say. And that is iron ring. So now what have we done? We have used the substantive. Substantive is that which is because of which ring is. That's the goal. That is the material cause. We made into adjective. We made, when you say it is a golden ring, golden has become an attribute rather than the noun and a ring which doesn't have any substance by itself because it depends on the, the gold for its own existence and it has become a noun ring and the other one has become the substance has become a, a, an adjective Ulta Sida. that is our problem what's the problem pure existence alone was there now we say space E, space is, exists means we think it's the existence is a property of the space, but actually it is just as it is not a golden ring, it is ringly gold. What is there is gold only, it is in the ring form. It is bangly gold, ringly gold. All are actually attributive things. There is no really substance of that. What is substance is that from which it came, by which it is sustained, into which it goes back. That is the real substance. From gold, all the ornaments came. By gold, it are sustained. Into gold, they go back. Therefore, gold is the real substance. So, what is real is really gold, not the ring. 
The ring that comes and goes cannot be real. That which is remains permanently, eternally is real. From the gold ring point. From the absolute point, even gold ring is also nothing but packaging electron, protons, neutrons only. So what's real? Iron is different from same electron, protons, neutrons. Gold is also same electron, protons, neutrons. So what's the difference between gold and ring, iron? Not much difference other than packaging only. How they pack. So what is there fundamentally is electron protons. Is it really real? Now they are claiming a God particle also, right? <laughs> Recently. But God particle is discovered by a conscious entity. He has to be there to discover anything. So scripture says it is a consciousness that is more real than any of this because consciousness exists in the waking state, in the dream state, and in the deep sleep state because I am conscious of my own existence in that. So if you look at the whole problem, what was there according to scripture is existence of is alone is there, is expressed in varieties of names and forms. So names are the knowledge of the things, forms are attributes only. So just as gold became an attribute for the ring, actually it is, existence is the substratum for the whole universe and all other things are superimpositions on top of that. So ringness is superimposed on gold and same way spaceness is superimposed on pure existence and we call space ease. You follow now? The whole analysis itself is that. Now what have we had, what have we done? We forget the gold and we say it is a ring. And we forget the gold, we say it is a bangle. Bangle is different from a gold, from the ring. Ring and a bangle are different. Bringle, bangle, bracelet, necklace, all varieties and properties of each one is different. In the same way, same existence expressing itself in varieties of names and forms, we forget that existence and only look at the attributes of each one and get carried away. He is different, she is different, he is different, that is different, this is different, all that and Hangama problem. I don't know, Hangama, I don't know what word it is. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> We make our own life mess because we are giving importance to superficial, superimposed names and forms, forget the essence of it. So Vedanta takes you, what you do is ring is still is a ring and a bangle is a bangle. The utilities are different, date of births are different, all that. Where ring has to be used as a ring, ring has to be used there and a bangle has to be used as a bangle. But don't get carried away with the utility and transactability all that perceptibility and so on but what is the essence is that which is pure gold the value of the ring and the value of the bangle is in the value of gold so value of the whole universe that i see is not in him in her in this in that all that it depends upon that which because of which it came by which it is sustained into which it goes back that's what is brahman we call it for that only scripture becomes a pramana because I cannot see Sat. How do you know Sat? Who told you that? Scripture is only Pramana for us. Pramana means means of knowledge. So Sat, Yomatvam, the spaceness is Apannam. It is superimposed on the pure existence. Vyomnaha Sattam tu Laukikaha. So Laukikaha, the worldly people think that the world, the space exists as though it is a property of the space, but actually spaceness is superimposed on existence. Worldly people think it is ring only, bangle only, but the ring is and bangle are for worldly transactions, but what is there is only gold. In the same analogy, because this is scriptural, scripture itself is giving analogy, this bold example. So, Tarki kaha cha avagachanti maya ujitam hitatu. Look at the power of maya, because this maya makes us to forget what is there and what is appears to be real. What is real doesn't we see, we don't see it. So, follow what the maya is doing. Say, the ring is real, but gold I am not seeing properly. Same way, existence is real, Brahman is real, and I am not able to 
pay attention to that, but I am paying attention only the superficial attribute to content of the material. And not only this is our worldly people, Laukika, not only the worldly people, even Tarkikas have defined the same problem, have problem. Tarkikas is, this is Nyaya, they are called in the, in, the, in, the, in the Vedantic tradition, they are called Nyaya and Vaiseshika. Those are two philosophers who mostly based their philosophy on the basis of logic and they think that space is nityam. Nityam means that which is eternally present and even they are confused. So, other people are confused, there is no real, the, it's not a big deal because even the great th thinkers have a problem. They think that this is real. So, what is real and what is real, the unreal is a confusion. So, confusion is, is in many philosophical darshanikas, many philosophers, whether it's Ishta, Advaita, Advaita and all, we have problems in terms of how you define a real. And Advaita comes only to a stage where that which remains the same in all periods of time alone is real. Trikala abaditam satyam. Anything that changes cannot be real. If there is something changes, there has to be changeless entity in the changing things. That alone is real. If the ring is becoming into a bangle and a bangle is becoming into a necklace, there is something which is changeless and that gold alone which is becoming expressing in the form of ring now, in the form of a gold. So, gold it was, gold it is, and gold it shall be. So, there is no change, that which remains the same alone is real. Sat it was, sat it is, and sat it will be. So, in between only Adav Ante Chaya Nasti Vartamana Tatadha. Remember in the Mandukya we say, it was not there before, it is not going to be there later and only it is between and even in between if you really look properly, it is not really there. Gold it was there before, now it appears to be a ring, but if you really look carefully, it is actually gold only. If you ask gold, when did you become a ring? You say, I never became a ring, I am only gold. So, even now when you are utilizing the ring as a ring and a bangle as a bangle, there is only gold and a gold and a gold only. We are only giving a different names for different forms, that's all, for different purposes, the utilities and all that. For transactional purposes, we are having transactions. We don't get confused with the transactions, with the realities. The reality is electrons, photons alone is real, but garbage is garbage and food is food. We have no confusion in the, at the transactional level. Knowing very well, garbage is also the same thing as is a delicious food also. Both electrons, photons, neutrons only. So, we should have a clear understanding from the absolute point. At the same time, not get, get confused with the transactional point also. Knowing very well, yes, ultimately the value depends upon the absoluteness. So, this Tarkikaha and Laukikaha, this, the, the logicians as well as the, the normal people or local people, they mistake that this is real, that is real, this is what I see, whatever I see is real. So now how do we wait? Now we are, we are not, we are intelligent people, right? <laughs> now when we look at the world, we should have this understanding in our transactions. Lord is there in every form. Sati is nothing but Lord, but different forms are expressing differently because those are properties of the forms only. So, we have to look at when we are dealing with the forms, we deal with the forms. We don't become a carpet uh, doormat for everybody. So, we have to treat just like Krishna says, if there is a, if there is a bad people, he says, Paitra Nam Sa. I forgot the sloka. Vinasaya is a dushkudam, dharma samstapanarthaya, sambhavami. So, he is ready to kill left and right for those who need to be killed. So, he is rakshasa or what. So, he, but at the same time, he shows everybody is him only. So, understanding and application has to be proper. So, from our point, he is different, she is different, he is different. So, in transactional point, we have to transact with a clear understanding. He is also evolving slowly. So, with a compassion we can transact, with an understanding we can compare. Because we were also confused one day, right? <laughs> Before we attended Panchadasi classes. Okay.
So the same no, is not only space for all objects is going to apply now. Yadyatha vartate tasya Yadyatha vartate tasya Tathatvam bhati manataha Tathatvam bhati manataha Anyatatvam brahmene neti Anyatatvam brahmene neti Nyayo yam sarvi Nayo yam sarva laukikaha Together, yet yet ha, vartati tasya, tadatum bati manataha, anyatatum brahmin eti, nyayo yam sarva loki kaha. Yet, yet means in whatever, any, any objects in the whole universe, this is the same problem. Now I explain here. Exp he expressed it into the space. Now you apply this to every, everything, any object in the world. How do I apply? Object is means object exists. So existence of the object comes from the sat. So existence is supporting that object, right? So sat is there in that. It's not a sat is there in it, not sat itself is that. Existence cannot undergo modification. Existence is appearing in this form. Gold appearing in the ring form. Same way because it's a material cause. Existence appearing in this form, in that form, in that form. So every form that I see is nothing but existence itself. Existence is Brahman. Don't think existence is something. Yeah. And the Brahman is you are. We'll come back to that uh, Mahavakya. But existence itself is that in that form. So that form is only forms are attributes is coming from the forms. So attributes means all the qualities that are coming. But existence doesn't have a form. So all that understanding has to be kept in mind when I am transacting in the world. Okay. So yat, yat means every object in this world has the same problem. And I, when I give importance to the object that I am seeing as a real and forget the really real reality that is the existence that is supporting the whole thing, I am getting confused. What is really real? What is apparently real has to be understood. What is really real is the goal. What is apparently real is the ring form and the bangle form and that. I am giving importance to the form and forget the goal there that is really. The value of the ring is only depends upon how much gold it is. The value of any object is, is because of that because of which the object is. The material cause that is the sat according to that. So, Yet, that any object, yatha, just like this, in the same way, vartate, it exists, tasya, it's tathatvam. So, the correct understanding of that should be manataha, by proper analysis of this process that we are undergoing, says bhati, it can be gained. Otherwise, anyathatvam of the opposite knowledge is called brahmeneti, it's called brahma. That's called delusion. Brahma means delusion. I am Nyayaha Sarva Logikaha. This logic is present everywhere. So what is he trying to say is we should know what is Prama and what is Brahma now. Prama is knowledge. So Pramana is means of knowledge. So any object is Prameyam, object of knowledge. Pramata is a knower. Prameyam is object of knowledge and pramana is a means of knowledge. So when I say this is a book, how do I know? I can see. Right? So what means seeing is a means of knowledge for me to establish that there is an object called a book. Right? So who is that? I am a knower. A conscious entity has to say, book doesn't say I am there. So conscious entity, a pramata, is required for prameyam, which is an object. So I'm using Sanskrit words now. Pramata is an object, is a subject. Pramata is a subject, no air. And prameyam is an object of knowledge. And the, the relation between the pramata and the prameyam is established by a means of knowledge called pramanam. A seeing, touching, 
tasting. So these are five senses operates which I can have the per direct perceptual knowledge takes place by that, right? So why is eyewitness accounts is I can see, it, therefore it is. That's what we say. It is true because I can see. So eyes became a pramana for me to know. So what's the difference between a pramana and the prama means valid knowledge. Prama means valid. It's a knowledge. Knowledge has to be valid. So prama means a valid knowledge. So valid knowledge depends upon pramana. So if you understood these basics. Oh, when I'm looking, going on a semi-dark room, I stepped on something. I thought it is a snake because it's a soft to touch and it's lying on the alley. So what I see? I see a snake there. Is it a Prama or a Brahma? Brahma means a delusory knowledge. But for me, it is Prama. You'll follow that. Because it's a snake and I'm afraid of snakes, so I'm running away. And other fellow says, no, it's not a snake, it is a rope. If I if it's a rope, how come I saw a snake? We can argue. But I can die with the knowledge that it is only a, a snake. My knowledge is not negated. His knowledge, he, according to him, it is a rope. But from my point, it is only snake. So how is that uh, my knowledge become a delusion? So for me, it is a prama. You follow no? For me, it is a valid knowledge that I saw a snake and it is a snake. In fact, it did. It was very soft it, to, when I stepped on it. You better be careful when you go there. <laughs> so I can advise everybody not to go that direction because there is a snake there. So for me, it is a valid knowledge. But when the conflict arises, when the other guy says it is a rope and not a why are you saying it is a snake, it is a rope, there is a conflict now. From my knowledge and his knowledge. So conflict can only be resolved by further experimentation. Right? We have to take with a torchlight. When the doubt arises, we have to take the torchlight and when we put a torchlight on it, it says, now, no, that was really a rope, not a snake. Now, what happened to the snake? Snake became Brahma. Until then, it was a Brahma. It is invalidated by higher means of knowledge. Now, you follow? What is a Brahma and what is Brahma? I take it as a Brahma, as a real knowledge, until higher knowledge comes and tells me that it is not really real. It is something other than this. And what is the proof? This is the proof it provides. A Pramana, a th putting a thought slide, is required for me to see clearly that it is a rope indeed and not a snake. So now you see what is a Brahma and is a Prama. So every knowledge that I have, I take it as a Prama until it is negated by higher means of knowledge. Follow? Now the scripture says, this is a table, this is a chair, this is a Prama, I can see. Therefore it is real. Sir, you are only seeing names or forms only. That's not really real. Who says? Scripture says no. Now you follow? Scripture becomes a higher means of knowledge for me to say that I think the world is real, I am real, he is real, she is real, all those reality that I attribute and therefore suffer the consequence of that reality that I superimposed on this. He really said like that to me. And blah, 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 you know, all our uh, problems and sufferings and so on, complaints, everything about somebody else. My boss like this and he did like that, she did like that, blah, 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 blah. All that problems is because they are real. And because of the real, because I can hear, I can see, I can touch, all those is as real as I can see. That's how I witness. But even though he says, what you see is just because you see, it's not real. That's what scripture says. The real you cannot really see. Now, because reality is the existence alone was there before, it itself became many, and you cannot see really that sat. You only can see, eyes can only have the capacity to see colors and forms. But they're not real. You cannot really see substance also. I can only see colors and forms. So something look like gold, it may not be gold. Eyes can only see glittering. So all the glitters need not be gold. So just because it has a golden color, therefore it is gold. That's because eyes can only see colors and forms. 
I had to do, you remember Eureka story. <laughs> Eureka is an Archimedes, I don't know if you know how many people. Eureka, Eureka. But he has to find out is really gold or not by, by other process. And therefore, I need to have other means of knowledge to establish whether it's a Prama or a Brahma. And therefore, he says, everything is becomes a Brahma once I understand using a scriptural knowledge at what is really real and what is really apparently real. Follow now? This, for that only, scripture becomes a means of knowledge. That tells you, it shows you higher, mean, higher knowledge. Clear now? How does scripture know what is real? Who told the scriptures? <laughs> so, according to our Hindu tradition, scripture is apaurusheyam. It is not written by a human being. That's our faith in the scriptures. So, how can that be? Who writes other than a human being? So, this is my theory because they don't, don't accept the traditional, the, according to me, all knowledge is aporushaya. Gravitational force is also aporushaya. Only you discover, right? You discover the laws of nature. Discover means removing the cover. That means it is covered. It was there, but it's covered by ignorance. So in the same way, pramana is a means to uncover. So, pramana is a means of knowledge to uncover what is already there. So, what the, the Vedas are, are discovered or revealed to the rishis called Vedadrashtas in the seat of meditation. It is revealed to them and which they passed on through a student. So, that's how Veda become a portion. They don't say, we discovered it, it is revealed to us, Shruti. Whereas the scientists will say, I discovered it. I discovered gravity. Gravitational force is there even before apples were falling down, even before Newton was there. <laughs> but no one, at the, no, there was there, force is there, but he discovered it, he removed it. Instead of, it is revealed to him. Is egotist, non-egotistical way of saying it is revealed to me. So they called revelations and that's called Veda Drashtas. The Rishis are called Veda Drashtas and they are this, that which is passed on by word of mouth is collected by Veda Vyasa into four volumes called Vedas and that becomes our Pramana. Okay? So therefore, all philosophical traditions of Hindu philosophy rely on Veda as the highest means of knowledge. Anything else is Brahma only, if it negates, if it is not confirmed by the Vedas. So, let us go to the next sloka. Yevam Shruti Vicharat Prak Evam Shruti Vicharat Prak Yatha Yadvastu Bhasati Yatha Yadvastu Bhasati Vichare Naviper Yeti Vichare Naviper Yeti Tatastachim Tatam Vietu Tatastachim Tatam Vietu Together Evam Shruti Vicharat Prak Yatha Yadvastu Bhasati Vichare Naviper Yeti Tatastachim Tatam Vietu. So Evam Sruti Vicharat Prag. So before I came to the scriptures, before I was exposed to the scriptural knowledge, so I was taking this whole world is really real. So that's our normal process. Yadha yadvastu bhata de. So, this evam suti vicharat prak, before vichara, before vichara, before enquiry of the scriptural statements through a teacher. So, scriptural statements, you cannot go and read scriptures yourself. You have to go to a teacher who can unravel the scriptural knowledge. That's how the suti itself, the scripture itself is that vijnanartam se gurum eva bhigache. You approach a teacher to teach, otherwise you get confused. Therefore, evam suti vicharat prak. So, that viparyeti, viparyeti, that which was misunderstood before, that I, this is real, that is real, and therefore, when I give reality to something, then I am afraid. 
Why? See, that tiger is really real and therefore I am running away. But I see it's only paper tiger. Then I am more afraid. It's only appearing to be real. It's not really tiger. So my fear goes away. So whenever there is other than myself, there is a fear. Udara mantaram kurude atatasya bhayam bhavati. A speck of difference makes things. Because I am not afraid of myself. I am afraid of something other than myself. Because when I go to deep sleep state, I am all by myself. There is no fear, no problems, nothing. I am comfortably happy sleeping. No worldly problem, no wife, no husband, no nothing, <laughs> no children, no colleges, no schools, no exams. Everything is completely free. Why? I am all by myself. There is nothing other than me. So, any duality is a cause of a problem. And when I see duality, even though when I see duality, when I consider that it's not really reality, it's only appearance, then there's no problem. Even though I see duality, it doesn't cause me a problem when I say hey, it's only appearances. It's appearing as this, but it's not that. If I have the knowledge, then there is no fear. And this is, so, vicharat, sruti vicharat, prak, before I have understood the scriptures, before I start inquiring into the truth, using the scripture as a means of knowledge, I am mistook, I mistook that the whole world is real, and therefore all my problems are during imposition of the reality to the polarity that I see. <coughs> and but once I am exposed, was to the scriptures. So, yada yad vastu vasate. And now I can see, means seeing means understand here. Because whatever I see is only names and forms. And now I understand what is this only, the absolute truth, the Brahman and varieties of forms. So, that, tat, tataha, so viyat chinchyatam. So one has to inquire in the same way. Every object starting from the space says what is really real. How do I do? Because in the deep sleep state there is no space. It came only with the mind. So whatever it comes and goes is not really real. Whatever there is, is that which remains the same all the time is only real. What remains all the time is I am only because I slept very well. I was there in the deep sleep state. I was there to sleep very well. But no other world, nothing else is there. So that is the only absolutely real. So now you see how the analysis of, uh, because he analyzed first Panchabhutas a little bit by the, by the five Sabdasparsa Rupa Rasaganda. Now he's going into deeper analysis of Maya, Maya creation of the space, and space is going to create from the space into the air. That's our scripture. Akashat, Vayuhu, Vayu, Agnihi, Agni, Apa, Abja, Prithvi, Prithvi, Avashtaya. So, one by one grossification is occurring. So, next in line of that from the Akasha is, is the air is created. Now, what is the property of the air? Property of the air is, it has a property of the space, which is Shabdam, sound. So, a lot of noise, voice, <laughs> the air can make. But if you have very highly wind, you know, a lot of noise you can see. Plus also, it has additional property which space doesn't have it, and that is sparsha, contact. So it is cool, very cold, you know, there's a chill factor. <laughs> when it's too cold, they say it's a, the real cold is different from what you, what you feel, right? Wind chilled factor. That is the same way if you go to a hot, if you are in a, in a very hot season and the air is blowing, you see the heat also. So, sparsat, touch, property of the touch comes into picture with the vayu. So, now how is this hierarchy? From the maya, remember Brahman is highest, then talks about maya. From maya, akasha. So, in that transformation that Brahman became akasha, sat came too. Because without Sat, there cannot be. Sat is always there. So, ma, the Akasha has two properties, if I say property, quote-unquote, existence, and it has a Sabda property. Now comes the next one, is the Vayu. Now, Sat that is coming from the space, it also goes to the Vayu, supports the Vayu. That means existence is there in the Vayu also. 
what is there not in the vayu is the space space is not there in the vayu vayu is in the space vayu means air so vayu is in the space but space is not in the air follow now so it gave only what transmitted all the time is one property of that previous one but the existence has to pervade that also because they cannot be without existence so air is when you say air exists means existence is coming from the pure sat and this is what is going to be analyzed here bhinne viyatsa viyatsi viyatsati shabda bhinne viyatsati shabda bhedat buddhischa bhedatah vedat buddhischa bhedatah vayu adishu anuruttam vayu adishu anuruttam sannatu vyometi bedadhihi sannatu vyometi bedadhihi together bhinne viyatsi bhedat buddhischa bhedatah vayu adishu anuruttam sannatu yomiti bedadhihi so bhinna bhinne viyat sat iti so bhin so bhinne viyat viyati is the space and sat is the the existence so space and existence bhinne are different and shabda bedhat and their names are also different the words are also different and their nature is also different in what way nature is different the space has existence but existence doesn't have space so one pervades the other one, the other one does not pervade the existence so existence is more subtler than the space itself why adushi adishu anuruttam so similarly this vayu adishu see in air etc also this sat anuruttam sat san sat tu yometi bedatah so the existence pervades even the vayu also from space vayu is created but in the creation process the existence of the of that still pervades into the space into the vayu also but you may but the space doesn't come into the into the vayu so now you understand brahman maya space air existence is pervading all though maya exists space exists vayu exists so existence is going through all the way through but each one is stopping at their own place maya is there but the maya expressed in the space is space appears to be real even though it's not real that's the work of maya what is not real seems to be real what is real i cannot see that's that's why is all maya bhagavan ka maya is that's why the the daivim esha guna mai maya duratya mai maya is divine origin and you cannot easily cross it because it is daivim it is of the divine origin only mami vaye prapadyante maya me tam tarantite only by surrendering to me you can cross this maya of mine surrendering means surrendering all your wrong notions that this is real this is real this is real that has to be surrendered to the understanding what's really real is that sat because the scripture says so follow that is what is the surrenderance is and this existence pervades even in the vayu also whereas the space does not pervade the vayu that's what has to be understood so why is the space pervades and the existence pervades and not that is going to give justification for that sadvastu adhikarutitva सद्वस्तु अधिकृत्तिवा धर्म व्योमस्तु धर्मता धर्म व्योमस्तु धर्मता धिया सत पृथक्वारे धिया सत धिया सत पृथक्वारे धिया सत पृथक्वारे ब्रूहि व्योम किमात्मकं 
ಸಟಲ್ Why it is subtle? It pervades everything. There is no space where space is not there, right? So everywhere we see, even though I don't have enough space here, if I say that's only because of the conditionings of the wall and say I don't have enough space. You know, in our house, we don't have enough space. Right now, that is true. But the space is not enough. When say we are taking the property of that in superimposed because of the condition of the, the, the uh, upadis and properties of the udasis we are superimposing. But even space is pervading those walls also. So, walls are in the space, not in. the space is inside the walls so that should be a what is dharmam and what is dharmi dharmam is a property then dharmi is the essence of it and that is the nature so dharma vyomastu dharmata we are getting confused between what is a property and what is the real that's because of the maya it is a ring is only property of the gold in that form but we made gold as a property and ring is a real substance so that is because of our confusion that's what maya does so maya and sat are the pervasiveness is there the existence is the subtlest of all adhika vrutitva the most subtle and that pervades all the objects so sat vastu adhika vrutitva dharma dharmi yomastu dharmata so they take that as a property now the ex- the space exists so existence has become a property of the space rather than space itself is a property of that existence it is space existence as existence ex- appearing as space right just as gold appearing as a ring so that's how one has to understand dhya satah pratakware so that dhya by proper discrimination we have to understand or differentiate what is real and what is unreal here or apparently real here and bruhi now tell me what is yoma ki masto so tell me what is the nature of this the space does it do you call it existence or doesn't exist because it is having an existence borrowed from the pu- from the sat and it is appearing so so is this you call it real or non real that's the question that is posing and it's raised by an objector it says what do you call do you call because some of the darshanas some of the philosophers have proposed that space exists nityam so as i said the nyaya vaiseshikas for them the space is akasha is nityam nitya vastu there are several for them nitya and this is one of them okay let's go 69 avakashatmakam tatsit ಅವಕಾಶಾತ್ಮಕ ತಸತ್ತಿ ಚಿಂತಿ ಚಿಂತಿ ಸತೋ ಸಚ್ಚೇತಿ ಭಿನ್ನ ಸತೋ ಸಚ್ಚೇತಿ ವಕ್ಷಿ ಚೇತ್ ವ್ಯಾಹತಿಸ್ತವ ವಕ್ಷಿ ಚೇತ್ ವ್ಯಾಹಿಸ್ತವ ಅವಕಾಶಾತ್ಮಕ ತತ್ಸೇತ್ ಅಸತ್ತಿ ಚಿಂತ ಭಿನ್ನ ಸತೋ ಸಚ್ಚೇತಿ ವಕ್ಷಿ ಚೇತ್ ವ್ಯಾಹತಿ ಸ್ತವ ಸೊ ಅವಕಾಶಾತ್ಮಕ ತತ್ಸೇತ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಡು ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ಎನ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಇ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸೇ ಇಟ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಅವಕಾಶ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಅವಕಾಶ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ is this real or not the question if he says so that has to be inquired if you say it doesn't exist as the really real then how can non existence can provide you accommodation see avakasha means providing an accommodation if you say space does not is not really real when you say non real things cannot accommodate anything if it is accommodating it has to be real right 
I should have real space to accommodate people. If I don't have imaginary space and yeah, you can come to my place and there is no space at all. <laughs> so in my imagination. So is it something like that you are talking about? He says, is it really unreal? And therefore, therefore, it, 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 if you say it cannot be real, bhinna sato asatcha niti vachiti vyad. If you say it's, it's not really real, it's not unreal also, then you have become, say you are confusing everybody. You say either you say it's a real or you say unreal, it's not unreal. How can it be what kind of thing it is? How can it be there at the same, not there? That's the question. Now that's why this is all. Remember, the Mitya aspect is not accepted by many. So these questions were raised by some of the, the Darshanikas and some of the philosophers. They raised the objections against Advaita and says, what is the nature of space? So we have, Nyaya Vaisishika says, it is real. He says, no, it's not real. What is real is only existence, according to them. If it's not real, how can it accommodate? You say it's accommodate. Therefore, if it's accommodate, it is it's, it's neither real nor real. How can you're, you're confusing because you're contradicting yourself. And that will be addressed next class. So we analyze up to 69. Let's do Purnamada. Purnam. Om Purnamada. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om